The whole heart of pre, mid, and pre wrath is wrong. It is loved by the flesh, the carnal part of our being. Pre trib promotes the spirit of the fair weather Christian unwilling to give their life for Jesus and unable to trust him for the protection he promises. And that's the protection he actually promises in the scriptures. Paul was tested when a prophet named Agabus tied his own hands and feet with Paul's belt. Acts 21.10 to demonstrate that Paul would have his hands and feet bound in like manner and would be turned over to the Gentiles if he went to Rome. Paul said, paraphrasing, you're breaking my heart. Don't you realize that I am not only willing to be bound but also to die for the name of the Lord Jesus. The heart of pre-trib is trying to use the scriptures to reassure adherents that no believer will experience trouble for the name of Christ. This doctrine is sweet message for those who are not sold out for Christ. Those who let the fear of pain and death exceed their love of the Lord. If Paul had adopted the heart of the pre-tribber and taken the warning and taken the warning of Agabus, he would not have gone to Jerusalem. If he hadn't gone to Jerusalem, he would not have written the books of Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. He would have never been shipwrecked and healed those people on the island and never testified before King Agrippa, Festus, and Caesar. He and the gospel messages would never have been taken to Rome, where, where, it was, where it was readily received and spread. The heart of the pre-trip theory is contrary to the heart of God. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Let's read that again. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Let's read that again for the pre-tribbers. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. That's not taken out of context. That's, it is what it says it is right there. Psalm 116 15 there's no getting out of that he that love of father and mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that love of son of or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and he that taketh not his cross and followeth and followeth after me is not worthy of me he that findeth his life shall lose it and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it that's Matt 10, 37 through 39. The, the pre-trip theory makes cowards of Christians. It allows them to exist comfortably with shallow biblical knowledge and lack of depth to weather the storm. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Matthew 7, 27. The rest will soon come out in a book. This is by Stan Johnson of the Prophecy Club. And this is the newsletter for February through March 2014. We had Prophet Efren Rodriguez speak at Spirit of Prophecy Church talking about the meteor that the Lord showed him that would hit in the Atlantic 40 years ago when he first received this vision from the Lord he told the Lord that he wasn't going to deliver it because it was too harsh of a message and he didn't want to go through all the, the rejection that, that would be received from people rejecting the message of a hardcore message like that so he pretty much ran ran from God on delivering that message for like thirty years until the Lord the Lord took his uh, help from him and made his made his back go out. So now the only time that that he's not in pain is when he's delivering this message. 
So this is a real prophet of God right here. That's axiomatic truth right there. Real, prophet, real prophets of God don't even want to be prophets. But when the Lord cho chooses them to be a prophet, there's, there's no way out of it. They have to do what the Lord, the Lord says do or you know, suffer consequences. So this, this is a real prophet of God right here. And he says that, uh, and this is my words, he pretty much says that a meteor, a meteor is going to strike in the Atlantic uh, on Mona Island and hit off into the, the bottom the bottom of the ocean there in between Mona Island and the western side of Puerto Rico hits a fault line there that runs up through America through up through the Mississippi River all the way up to the Great Lakes causes the, the nation to split in half widens the Mississippi River uh, when the meteor first makes contact about around 2 a.m. I believe he said in the morning it sends a blast wave and a, a subsequent earthquake all at the same time. The blast wave is bringing in, uh, like from a nuclear explosion, bringing in straight line wind of 300 miles an hour, and that reaches that reaches around the world. And the earthquake is happening at the same time. Then after the earthquake, you have the the waves arriving from the tsunami, 400 foot high, and they reach Miami, according to this prophet by 5 a.m. in the morning and then they start inundating their way up the east coast this event alone will, will, will bring about the death according according to them of uh, two out of three Americans so that's like one-third of Americans would would perish during that event and that and I think that's about 200 200 million Americans and it's a judgment it's a judgment from God because the church the church is playing games with God and God always judges his people first because we're supposed to know better. We're supposed to, we're supposed to know what we're supposed to do. You know, We're not supposed to be looking like the world or doing what the world does. And the church in America and some parts of the world allow every type of sin. They don't challenge evil. They don't fight evil. They, they allow prayer to be taken out of the schools. They allow babies to be killed in abortion. Uh, they allow homosexual pastors. They, they allow every form of sin because they think they don't have to deal with anything because they're going up in a rapture. The rapture is a doctrine that makes Christians think that they don't have to fight. Fight against evil. Pray against evil. Make a stand against evil. Protest against evil. Or they don't have to do anything because they're going up in a rapture. That's what the rapture, that's a, the mindset that rapture puts the church in. It puts the church to sleep. Makes it complacent. And they have this escape, uh, uh, irresponsibility, uh, unaccountability doctrine. That's, that's what the pre-trib rapture promotes. You want true protection during the tribulation? You clean up your life and, and, and get in close with God now. Spend, spend time with God now on your knees. Passing and fasting and praying. The in, intimate time with God. The alone time. Not waiting for Sunday. But spending time with God alone every day, <laughs> getting in that word every day, reading the word of God. Psalm 91, you read Psalm 91, that tells you exactly how God is going to protect you in a tribulation. Just like the three men that were thrown in the fiery furnace. They wasn't, they wasn't pulled up in the air, they was, they was here and they passed the test. They were thrown in the fiery furnace and they didn't get burned. And Jesus Christ was in there with them in the fire and they did not get burned you know one thing that can be causing problems is people reading these fake bibles like niv where the niv is talking about that same verse they're talking about we see a fourth in the in the flame and he looks like a son of the gods that's greek mythology right there jesus christ is not a son of the gods small g he's the son big g of of god he is the son of god so the NIV de de decreases Christ's divinity in that in that verse, de his divinity. He's the Son of God. Well, I'm gonna read a little bit here from this uh, from the Prophecy Club newsletter here. It says uh, Ephraim does not speak English, only Spanish. God sent him to warn Puerto Rico that he is sending a massive media to hit Puerto Rico, bringing judgment to Puerto Rico and to the United States. Ephraim was shown a vision of a large meteor hitting Mona Island just west of Puerto Rico causing a tsunami 
1,000 feet tall, which would destroy most of Puerto Rico and the surrounding Caribbean islands and hit South America. This giant tsunami would hit the eastern coast of the U.S. The impact point at Mona Island provides a straight line of sight to the east coast of the U.S. and to a lesser degree the Gulf of Mexico. There will be three events occurring simultaneously. The shock wave produced by the asteroid collision, the 12-point earthquake, and the following giant tsunami. This event will be a worldwide event. The death toll shall be overwhelming in Puerto Rico alone, which will reach 750,000 people. The massive wave will, will be moving at a speed of 400 miles per hour, according to a scientist that studies these phenomena. After the, after the impact, the wave will be taking everything in its path through the Caribbean islands. It will, it will be entering Miami, Florida at around 5 a.m. It will make its way up the eastern United States, also the Gulf of Mexico and South America. Ex experts predict that such a colossal impact would cause the Earth's rotation to cease for three days, meaning the Earth would not rotate for three days, which in turn means that there would be three days of utter darkness on this side of the Earth. Wow. He was given a very general time to watch for it. As soon as Yayi, or, or, or uh, as they would probably say, uh, uh, Gigi or Yayi, is laid to rest, Immediately I will send my judgment to the island. It is in God's time, not ours. Yiyi Avila, Puerto Rico's greatest evangelist, went to be with the Lord June 28, 2013. Now bear in mind, God's immediately is not the same as our immediately. Okay, Prophet Leslie, this is this is uh Stan Johnson's wife. She's a she's a major major prophet of God, has many confirmed prophecies was told one of the headlines to the fall of America would be catastrophe hits America. This is a headline that God showed her. What if a meteor hits the day after America forces Israel to give the Palestinians a state? Bringing the headline, Omar ushers in a Palestinian state. This is also what Leslie was, was shown. Prophet Leslie Johnson. Pastor Shane Warren heard God say in an audible voice, you parted my land, now I will part yours. And he was shown a great earthquake hitting the central part of America. Prophet Leslie Johnson was shown a vision of a 200 foot high tsunami hitting the US coast. Hitting the US coast. She wasn't shown which coast, but she was just shown that wave coming in, inundating this way. Uh, Apostle Augusto, Apostle Augusto Perez was shown it will be the east coast of the United States and will go inland for from 20 to 25 miles. Michael De Bodell was shown the Golden Gate Bridge will fall and large chunks of California will fall into the ocean. Hmm. Prophet, Prophet Mohan Lazarus said an angel showed him the U.S. would turn against Israel and force her to split Jerusalem giving, giving the Palestinians a state. He saw a map of the United States and an angel took a long sword and stabbed the center of the map saying you split my land, I will split yours. He was shown a large split right down the middle of America. Serious business. <laughs> Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez, he's seen a 400 foot wave go in inland 100 miles on the east coast. That would pretty much inundate everything. Well, I was at the meeting, and uh, one one comforted thing that uh, one thing that that gave me comfort that Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez said was that if we live righteously here, God will honor that by protecting our loved ones that are still living on the East Coast, even if they even if they're not believers, that God will protect them. So that gave me that gave me great comfort right there because I still got I still got family members living on the East Coast, you know. And, you know, man's track record for lis listening to warning prophecies has been terrible ever since Noah's. When, you know, when Noah was given his warning prophecy, only eight people listened to him out of probably millions of people. And that's a terrible track record for man. Man always wants to believe in stuff, sweet things like a, a pre trib rapture that's not even promised in the scriptures unless you really try to stretch them and twist them. I mean, just man just... I, I, you know, I, w I would want to sit around and hear sweet things talked all day too. But hey, I'm a realist. I'd rather hear the truth than than telling me what what I want to hear. 
I can tell myself what, what I want to hear all day. So I don't need no pastor or anybody else telling me what I want to hear. I want to hear the truth. Because I would much rather be surprised by a pre-trib rapture than be su surprised by a tribulation. I'll tell you that. Now everything I just shared with you and the, and the prophecy of Ephraim Rodriguez. If you don't, you, if you don't believe that it's true, you are to take it to the Holy Spirit in prayer yourself. That's what you're supposed to do anyway. Any, you don't just take anybody's word for anything. Anything that comes across your table, you are supposed to take it to the Holy Spirit for confirmation to find out if it's true or not. When you go to make your prayers, you ask the Holy Spirit, is it true? You know, if you would do that for the pre-trib rapture, you wouldn't be believing in it. But a lot, many of you are afraid to ask the Holy Spirit, is a pre-trib rapture or false rapture? Because you, you're, you're comfortable in just believing that lie. You know, you got you to gotta come off come after that. You got to come out of that. You know, and, and just like Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez says, if you don't believe his prophecy is from God, go ask the Holy Spirit. He's actually daring you to ask the Holy Spirit because he knows it's true. You know, he who's who is not on the side of he who he who does not have the Holy Spirit is not on the side of God or he or, or another way. He who does not have the Holy Spirit as a guide is not on the side of heaven. 